first step is to brew the tea and mix it with sugar to create a sweetened tea solution. The sugar provides a necessary energy source for both the bacteria and yeast to carry out fermentation. The concentration of sugar in the initial mixture can influence the fermentation rate and the final taste of the kombucha. Too much or too little sugar can affect the balance of sweetness and acidity in the end product. Tea provides the necessary substrate for microbial activity and contributes to the overall flavor profile of kombucha. The timing of steeping the tea depends on the desired strength of the tea flavor. Scoby is then added to the sweetened tea mixture once it has cooled down to a temperature that won't harm the microorganisms. The jar is then covered with a cheesecloth and this will facilitate the exchange of air but also act as a physical barrier for any insects or pests. The SCOBY remains in the mixture throughout the fermentation process and its activity is responsible for the transformation of sugars into organic acids and alcohol. The mixture is then left to ferment for a period of time, usually 1-3 to three weeks, but the exact timing can vary based on factors like temperature and the desired flavor profile. Kombucha is a yeast fermentation of sugar to alcohol followed by bacterial fermentation of alcohol to acetic acid. During the fermentation process, there is a succession of bacterial species that play different roles at different stages. The yeast, especially Saccharomyces, ferments sugar into alcohol and other byproducts, while the bacteria, primarily Acetobacter and Gluconacetobacter, convert alcohol produced by the yeast into acetic acid. After fermentation, the liquid is strained to remove the scoby and the resulting kombucha is often bottled. The resulting scoby can be stored for further use, but it should be kept in 100 ml of kombucha so that it does not get dry. The kombucha is refrigerated and best consumed cold.